I made a web game that got hacked on the first day. In this video, I'm going to share my progress on developing a web game called KoopyGame.com. Part 1. Publishing my game. After I published Koopy Game to the public, 17 new users registered. And within a few hours, I got a message on Discord. Someone had exploited my game. How did this happen? Well, very simple actually. One line of code can ruin everything. For an average player who doesn't know programming, my game worked just fine. They could open cases, use items and so on. But some users are programmers as well. And they can do magic. My advertisement system got exploited. How? Let's say you want to get a reward for watching advertisement. You start watching the ad for the required amount of time. Then you click Get a Reward. When you click the button, you send a request to the server to claim your reward. And the server decides what to do with your request. If you click too fast or try to claim rewards from multiple ads at once, the server should decline your request. Well, it should. In my case, I miswrote one line of code. And if you knew how to send requests using code, you could get endless rewards. I fixed it in a minute, and if that bug was totally my fault, the next one I didn't expect at all. A player has 5 cases, they can open all of them and get some coins. But if the player sends multiple requests at the same time, it turns out into a disaster. Instead of 5 rewards, they get 9. Why? Because of a phenomenon in programming called race condition. In simple words, when you send too many requests at the same time, the server assumes you still have the item before all requests are proceed. This leads to unexpected results. And in my case, it was even worse. My condition for checking player's item was if item quantity is zero, then player doesn't have an item. But thanks to race condition, a player could end up with minus one, minus two and minus 600 items. Basically, if you had a negative number of item in your inventory, you could use it again and again. I fixed the condition and started searching for ways to prevent race conditions. It's a pretty tricky topic, but I found several solutions that when combined seemed to solve my problem. Part 2. Development. I spent about 3 days fixing race condition issue. I also decided to set limits everywhere I could. Registration, login forms, token validation and other requests. After that, I implemented a leaderboard to add some competition and make the game feel less lonely. You can also visit other players' profiles now, and then I added the ability to use multiple items at once, up to 100. Fixed a lot of bugs that users found, added a UI for players' balance and energy, I also started to explore in WebSockets and how they work. They allow for real-time interactions. After moving some bits in memory, I decided to stick with the existing library, socket.io. And I implemented a simple real-time chat. Now players can talk to each other. This was my first step into real-time features. So these two weeks were all about fixing bugs, improving security and adding new features. My original goal for this video wasn't achieved, because my plans changed. You know. It's not a good idea to build new things when old ones aren't working properly. But I implemented chat and I got a basic understanding of how WebSocket work. Alright, my next goal is a real-time marketplace. Subscribe to follow my progress, join our community on Discord and Telegram. And see you in the next video. Пока-пока!